Okay. Hello, my name is Brianna Banowitz. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the event director for the University of Iowa Dance Marathon 29. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about dancer engagement and retention through events. Um, so to start off with a little introduction, the goal of this presentation is to learn how the University of Iowa Dance Marathon has emphasized dancer engagement through large and small scale events. Um, a brief outline, this includes the dancer experience position, which was my position last year, along with our dancer appreciation event, our big event, and the correlation with dancers, along with how you can implement it at your dance marathon. So to start off the dancer experience position or chair, um, so the responsibilities within the UIDM chair position include um, the event committee chair. So this works along with three other chair positions under our event director. Um, this chair position has two subcom or subcommittee members, and then they actually gained three this year. Um, so overall, this position helps plan and execute events all throughout the year. Um, this includes communications with all members on dance marathon leadership, including chairs and directors, along with brainstorming all of our events and overall just planning and executing every event throughout the year. Um, and then throughout this presentation, I'm going to talk about UIDM's role in utilizing this throughout our year, but if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask. So um, this dancer experience chair position has two events that they plan. The first is our Miracle Cup Showdown. Miracle Cup Showdown is um, a way that they can raise the most amount of points throughout the year. So just a little brief understanding, Miracle Cup points are how we um, basically monitor how active our dancers are being within our dance marathon. So each month they're given a way to kind of introduce and um, vote on what they did and what they liked to do throughout the that month. And then um, at the end of the year at our big event, they are rewarded. The team that has the most Miracle Cup points receives like a prize or something to look forward to at our big event. So this is an event that they can raise the most Miracle Cup points at. Um, so briefly, this event um, has a goal of just like kind of giving our dancers a competitive way to interact with each other. In previous years, this looked like uh, dodgeball tournaments or like barrel races, relay races type of things. Last year we had in kind of more of downscaled event. We had five different areas where people could do just dance, Jeopardy, minute to win it games, charades, and then another event that kind of just changed throughout the whole thing. Um, but yes, people loved this and there are a few photos at the bottom. Um, and then the dancer appreciation event, which I will talk about more in the next slides. Some other things that this chair position does includes the fourth year dancer ceremony at our big event, which I will also talk about later, um, alongside the dancer appreciation and what that looks like at our big event. And then our dancer packet, which is this photo directly underneath that says UIDM dancer guide. This packet consists of 18 pages that basically give everything and anything a dancer may need in order to be successful within our dance marathon, including like how to fundraise, fundraising ideas, um, what their money goes towards. So our dancers raise $500. Um, this breaks it down on what their money could look like for a DM family alongside like what events we have throughout the year and basically who and what dance marathon is, all of our history, what our dance marathon looks like, so our different cabinets and different chair positions. Um, and then uh, this position also does surveys and data. So this is regulated by having little swipe tables where they swipe their IDs and then later on they'll receive a survey. Um, my position last year kind of built and looked at all of these different questions and then chose which ones we wanted to ask our, our leadership and dancers. And we got this information back. We kind of looked through it, realized like what we did good, what we didn't do good. And this year I have been utilizing this information so much, especially as I go into planning my big event this year. Um, I am looking at what our dancers liked, what they didn't like and how I can make it better for them. So this is a very critical part. And I think it's very important if you want to start off with something, surveys and data are a good way to do something easy, but use the information in a great way. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about the dancer appreciation event. Um, this year we had Fright Night with DM. Um, just a brief schedule. We had 
um, the beginning of it starting off with pumpkin painting, which was a in the back of the room, we had tables set up with like 50 pumpkins where people could paint and just kind of have fun, get to talk to other people. We also had popcorn and candy for them to eat and snack on. And then around 7 p.m., we transitioned to the front of the room where we had it movie theater style and we had the haunted mansion playing. Um, so the goal of this was to provide an event where dancers could spend time and build relationships with an organization, overall giving them a goal to have a connection with other people in return has us have them bring their friends and build those connections as well, which also helps with recruitment and retention along with fundraising in the future. Um, so if you have any other ideas, I'd love to hear them. And then this next slide has a little bit of sound, just so you know. So yeah, that TikTok was a video our PR director made last year, just kind of summarizing what all went on in this event. And honestly, so many people are excited for what this year's event is going to be, which a little secret, it's going to be a holiday themed one. So that's very exciting. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. Um, so this next slide just has a little bit more about it. We have the image that was posted on our Instagram, Facebook, and a lot in within the building that this was being held at. And then here are just a few pictures of people and their pumpkins. So you can tell a lot of people put in a lot of effort and loved what they were doing with them. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about our big event and our dancers. So last year, a little bit of information before I get started. We planned an in-person event up until three weeks before our actual event, and we got switched virtual. So I have all of my planning for the in-person event, and then obviously we also had the virtual aspect. So I did my best in order to kind of change and see what this should look like. It was very difficult because we were all hands-on making sure the event even happened. Um, so to start off with, um, the virtual event, we have the fourth year dancer ceremony, which I mentioned earlier, um, in both in in-person and virtual, this includes a PowerPoint slide. So last year I had a slide that kind of said, thank you. We had our advisors and our executive director come up and thank them and just give a little speech. And then I also provided them with some statistics that showed what they have done. So how much money they've raised, how many families they've helped, how many miracles they've made, all that kind of fun stuff to like remind them what they've done in the last four years. Um, and then the big difference between an in-person versus virtual ceremony included the fact that the virtual, they received their pin, which said like fourth year dancer UIDM. Um, and then a sweatband that said fourth year dancer in their big event packages while at an in-person event, they would have came up on stage and then they would have been honored that way. Um, so to continue on with the virtual big event, um, the dancers had the opportunity to do a scavenger hunt. We had seven different locations on campus where they could have the opportunity to find gift cards ranging from five to $50. And this was just for like restaurants downtown or like different activities around our air, local area. And then they also had the opportunity to go to multiple different photo booths. So you can see the one here that is on our Pentacrest, it says UIDM. And then we had another one with a mural on it and um, another one that was a cancer ribbon. And then on that ribbon, we had pinned little ribbons that they could actually take away. So um, overall, we kind of lacked in the area of the virtual aspect, but we did what we could. And I think if we were ever to do a virtual event again, we can definitely build from these ideas and provide more of, more of a dancer experience that could build better connections. However, within our in-person um, big event, this last year, I planned a dancer appreciation event at the big event alongside a whole room dedicated to dancer experience. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. So these are very rough drafts of what we were going to do. Of course, they didn't go any further due to getting switched to being virtual. Um, but basically throughout our big event, um, this is our biggest event at the very end of our year, kind of celebrating everything we've done, figuring out how much we fundraise. And we have 
multiple, our, our whole building is taken over by this event. We have multiple activity rooms that include ideas such as like we had a carnival room, we had an arts and crafts room. We've had like laser tag and escape rooms before. Um, so we have things throughout the IMU that kind of provide activities for our dancers. However, um, I wanted to do a specific room that was dedicated to them and no one else. So um, this room was open from 9 p.m. to 3 p.m. the next day and included at times of activities that were more calm and relaxing because the rest of the IMU was crazy and there was lots of other things going on. So they could come here and they could do things such as the dancer social hour where we, where we would have activities such as making like friendship bracelets, doing letter writing to our families, and overall just like getting to know other dancers. Um, my idea was basically to have like prompts at each table, kind of give them something to do while they're just standing there talking. And then um, during our more calm and there isn't a lot going on in the IMU, we would have more going on in this room. So we had planned a bag tournament. We were going to have versus yoga come in and do a yoga class and then we were also going to have things like um, limbo and different activities like that another exciting thing we were going to do is having a line dance teaching thing where this would be able to have people go up on stage and they could present it um, and then we are also going to have big screens in the room where they could watch what was going on on the main stage up here they didn't want to be down there with all the people so um, within this room, we were also going to have a dancer appreciation event. Um, so this was going to be about an hour long. Um, my original plan was to have a mu musical chairs um, activity going on. And then following that was like a more chill and like get to know you activity. Um, and then they would receive gift bags with like written thank you notes along with a propel packet, a breath mint, cliff bars, smiley and smiley stress balls. And then we also were going to offer Rice Krispie bars and then cookies there for them to snack on. So overall, this was just going to be a whole room dedicated to them being able to have something else to do. Because during our big event, there are times where there isn't a lot going on and dancers do get bored. And especially as a dancer, you don't have as many like volunteer opportunities or um, other activities to do during the event that where they're assigned to do things. So this was to fill those spaces. So lastly, I wanted to talk about how you can implement this at your dance marathon. Um, looking at this from the view of adding a whole position to your dance marathon, I would recommend starting out with figuring who and what committee you want this to fall underneath. As I said earlier, this falls underneath the event committee. So will they be planning events? Will they be interacting with dancers? These are questions you want to ask because you might want them underneath like the membership cabinet, or if you have a different committee that this might just fit perfectly under, there you go. Um, also next you want to formulate goals and responsibilities you expect from this position. Um, so you could look around and ask like, do you expect them to up bring dancer engagement? Do you just want them to provide another event? Do you just want them to have more connections with the dancer specifically? Um, and then this will kind of lead to who oversees it once again. Um, maybe this is more specific of a director or maybe a specific, like the specific chair position has certain like committee members that focus on different ideas or aspects of the position. Lastly, you need to find someone to actually take over the position. So my previous director looked at me and saw someone who had dancer experience as I was a line captain. Um, when I was looking to fill this position, I looked for people who either had a lot of actual dancer experience or who had that connection as a captain in their previous years. Next, if you want to just add some of these ideas to your dance marathon, I would recommend starting off with where and who you want to take over these ideas. So which committee will oversee specific things? As I kind of mentioned earlier, you could have the membership cabinet do more of that dancer connection aspect, while you could have the event committee plan more of the dancer appreciation events or activity wise. Um, Next, you also want to complete a list of goals and ideas that correlate with dancer appreciation. I would look at this as talking with your exec team and really 
invest in the idea of where this could go and where you want to go and what steps you want to take to reach these goals and ideas and then go from there branch out figure out which committees and so on i would also recommend finding someone to acquire these responsibilities so um like i said before what background do you want these people to have um if you want somebody who has event planning experience to do these maybe look at the event committee and see what they could do or where this could fall or if this would even fall under that committee so just with these brief ideas overall you want to find the end goal being more connections made throughout dance marathon because the more connections you have the more returning dancers the more dancers are going to retain and then you're also going to see more fundraising if people find a connection find something that brings them in makes them friends and they can see what they're doing for our families they're going to in turn raise more money so yeah i just want to say thank you for your time i also am interested in talking about a few other things if you have the time or want to um some other specifics would be implementing these ideas of, as the event director which i kind of mentioned a little bit about but going from this position to my now position has really changed how i want this year to look like and my goals as the, as a director along with like overall just planning and executing events as the event director and then um kind of going back to this the chair position um how i communicated with dancers during this time and overall communication with the dancers so yeah, if you wanted to reach out, my dance marathon email is dm-event at uiowa.edu. Thank you.